Nathan Fife joins us. Uh, Nate, great to talk to you. Nice to have you back and running around, albeit in the waffle. How does it feel? Evening, gents. Yeah, it's been good to get back and get some minutes in the body uh, and just get through a game, wake up Monday morning feeling a little bit sore and bruised. It was nice. No problem. So physically got through and will be available to play this week? Yeah, all good. Shoulder, back, the major concerns. Uh, my joints at 30 are ones to watch as well, but everything yeah, as expected. What about the uh, staying out in the ground, mate? I thought you might have ducked down the tunnel a couple of minutes to go in the waffle game, but you <laughs> stayed out there and had about five million selfies. Yeah, I wouldn't have minded maybe just sneaking off Brownie, um, <laughs> but the game was pretty tight at the end there. Uh, look, overall, the experience... Um, I grew up playing country footy where kids were able to run on the ground and interact with players, so there was some familiarity about it. Um, and just to be able to engage with... Um, so sort of the fans and the kids, it was a special day. And now, so what's the protocols for you now? I know you're at home there now, so have you had to separate yourself because of that for a day or two just to be extra cautious, or how does the week look for you? Uh, we've been um, sort of having a fair few protocols in place as it is already, mask wearing, isolating where possible. We had a day off today, so I didn't see any of the players. Um, I'll get in tomorrow and train with the group, but wherever possible, just try and stay away because obviously being close contact with a couple thousand people, mm. there's a, uh, a small chance, but fingers crossed I'll be sweet to go this weekend. Nat, just one more on uh, the waffle game on the weekend. Did you have to swallow a little bit of pride to, to, to go back? Because, you, I mean, you, the heights you've reached as an AFL player, I mean, you've done what so few have. Did you have to swallow your pride a little bit? And is the expectation now that you'll come back in next week? Uh, I think it became really realistic, Rue, as we were sort of looking at a 10-week layoff and then a 10-month overall layoff from footy that I was going to have to come through a lower-level competition, particularly coming off a back injury. I just lost so much conditioning. So um, I was on board from a long way out and started to get quite excited about the opportunity of going back and playing um, at that level. And, um, and as far as this week is concerned, yeah, I would like to... Uh, coming to the AFL side, what that looks like. We've got to get through selection. The boys played really well yesterday. Uh, no one's exactly putting their hand up and saying, I don't want to be a part of this team. So we've got a few selection headaches, which is a good thing. Um, but hopefully I'm available and playing against Hawthorne this weekend. They're great headaches to have for Justin and the Fremantle Footy Club to have you sitting there fit and ready to go and we all expect you to play. I mean, no one doesn't. So from your own point of view, I mean, you've been sitting back, you've been observing this side take all before them, albeit for a couple of weeks where they, they slipped up under sort of the inclement conditions. But you know, Brisbane on the bounce, Melbourne on the bounce, you've sat, you've watched it. Where do you see yourself best fitting in? Uh... I watched it with JL and we sort of looked at where the opportunity to insert me back into the side and have a net value add. I mean, there's no point in me putting, going back into the midfield and playing a role that Will Brody or Dave Mundy or Caleb Sarong or Andy Brayshaw have done so well for the whole season. So, uh, plus I'll be pretty rusty and need to take a number of weeks to find some form. So um, that would indicate that there'd be a fairly big forward component to where I play. Uh, but what that looks like exactly, we've, we're only a week into winter. We've got a lot of heavy lifting to go through the back end of the year. Um, my role will be sort of flexible and adaptable as we go throughout the year. That, that's a bit of a change, Nat, from the, uh, from the start of the year when you, you... I know your tongue was planted firmly, firmly in your own cheek. You said the experiment of me playing forward was over. I was fortunate enough to, uh, to see you in the National Rules training camp. You actually didn't play, but you're in the training camp. I reckon you can make one of the great centre-half forwards, mate, if you're prepared to make that move up forward. Is that something that you're, again, open to? Yeah, it just shows the uh, short-sightedness of sweeping declarations, really. <laughs> um, that there's, there's new information now. We're a different team than we were at the start of the year as far as what we've been able to build. Um, and, and I think um, I am very open to playing forward. I started my career as a forward. Um, but more than anything, I'm very open to playing within our system wherever best suits the team and wherever we can identify my strengths um, adding to that, that mix. So, uh, yeah, forward looks like a fairly reasonable option at this point. Now, it seems as if the emergence of Will Brody has come about because of your absence. Yeah, Wiz um, has really reinvented himself here. Contested beast, just gets after the ball on the inside for us and does a lot of that grunt work. Um, and his connection now with Caleb and Andy and Dave... 
Uh, they seem to know where each other are. He's not looking like slowing down at all. Um, and, and I think that we've really found a player who's going to be a great system player for a number of years. Now, now I just want to move on to Justin Longmuir. From the outside, he, he's, he's obviously quite emotive on the weekend, but seems pretty calm. But he did put it on the players and the whole football club two weeks ago after that loss against Collingwood that they need to lift their standards, maybe getting ahead of themselves. Seem to have responded the last fortnight after that. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to ask JL more so about that comment. He's been very balanced all the way through the season. We had a patch earlier in the year where we weren't quite delivering on our expectations on field as far as role. Uh, and then from there it went really well until we had that two-week loss. I wouldn't say that he clipped the group, put us on notice or anything like that. He's been very consistent with his messaging. Along with the assistant coaches, they've developed a system that... Um, uh, we're trying to even out the inconsistencies and I think we're seeing a more mature week-on-week -week performance which comes on the back of, as you know, really good preparation, um, standards, getting in and, and doing the work through the week. We, as in the media, jumped all over that, that comment from, from Justin Longmuir about getting ahead of your, yourselves and the response has been absolutely stunning. To, to your mind, what, did you see little things w within that period after the Geelong game that, that gave you any indication that that might have been the case, that the group was just a, a little bit ahead of themselves? Absolutely none, Rui. Um, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the coach, but I, I probably think that that was more referring to the external hype that was starting to build. You would have heard yep. um, some of the hashtags that are getting a run over here in the West. We're all getting pretty excited for a team that hasn't won a premiership, but um, internally what I've seen is a driven, committed group uh, that know that we're only in early June. We've got a lot of work to do to get to the back end of the year um, and we're hungry to keep doing that work. We, we missed the hashtags. What, what were some of them? Can you enlighten us? Come on, mate. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a flag mantle at some stage or something like that. Um, I, I'm interested in your expectations of yourself. I think one of the things that I've loved about you throughout your career is there's no false modesty. You, you, your expectations are really high and you know what you are capable of doing. And you just speak about now having to slot back in and, and you're being very respectful of the players who have done such a great job. What's the expectations for you now for the, for the next, hopefully, 10 games before uh, a September campaign? Yeah, I can speak quite honestly, Gary, in that this back uh, rehab and coming off two shoulder reconstructions has been the most humbling rehab period I've had to go through and uh, now presents an opportunity for me to evolve as a leader and as a player, and genuinely um, slot back into a team that's playing well and find form week on week. Um, I, I really can only look one week at a time and sort of build my minutes as the season goes on. And hopefully six or eight weeks down the track, I found a little bit of match fitness, some hardness, I'm starting to see it a bit better, um, and I can really add some value to the team. But more than what I can do on field, I think Dave Mundy, Michael Walters, Travis Collier, the senior players, we have a big job, Alex Pierce of providing a stable platform. Um, we're in weapons development, basically. We've got so many good young players, and our job is to provide that leadership that they can really bring our club um, to a position we haven't been to before. Well, why was it so humbling, mate? Well, do, you, do you feel like you're, you're at a point now where maybe you have to reconcile that you, you just can't do what you've always done? Is, is that the conclusion you've come to? There's an element of that, yeah. Just the... Um, Often the competitiveness and hunger and drive was enough to physically will yourself into whatever was required, but I couldn't do anything for six weeks. My glute wouldn't fire, my calf wouldn't fire, I couldn't run 50 metres. I had to go and have surgery, a shoulder operation that failed. I physically couldn't go anywhere or do anything um, and had to put my hand up and say, I'm, yeah, I've found, physically I've found the bottom um, and I'm not going to be able to fight the, my way through this um, and basically put the ego to the side and gradually and slowly, methodically build back to a position where I can now hopefully impact at AFL level, but it's not going to be at the same standard uh, as I left off last year. That'll take five or six weeks to come back. And, and maybe an acknowledgement, you know, from an, an individual point of view, you've, you've done just about everything you can and that this side is now really well positioned. Have they surprised you as, as to where they're at right now and um, the fact that... Yeah, you know, the rest of us can, can, can look at it dispassionately and see that it's pretty real and pretty genuine. Are you getting excited about the possibility? Uh, I've been excited for a while. We've been very methodical with our list management strategy. David Walls has done a great job there. It's sort of going to the draft, bringing in good people and good talent. Um, 
in, this, in the same boat with our coaches and coaching ranks, sort of assembling a crew, which is what you need to be a good finals contending team for multiple years. So uh, the excitement has been building internally for a while and um, you can only be po patient and hope that it'll turn. And finally, for us, it feels like uh, we're in a good position um, that we can attack the back half of the year. And that's all we've done, really, is given ourselves a chance uh, to finish the year strong and, um, and then the real season starts after that. Now, can you just give us a picture of what Perth's like at the moment? So, you guys are absolutely flying, yet your crosstown rival, the West Coast Eagles, have been absolutely horrible now, been decimated with injuries for different reasons, but their poor form has been in stark contrast to yours. Yeah, I mean, swings and roundabouts. Brownie, we've been uh, on the flip side of this coin a couple of years ago, so um, certainly understand what they're going through over the road. Um, and on the other side of the coin, I don't really leave South Terrace here in Fremantle. That's about as far as I go. Um, so all I see is Dockers hats and beanies and scarves and people really starting to enjoy what our team's doing. It's exciting. Uh, it's a good experience to go to the footy on the weekend and watch our young team do what they do. So uh, it's good to be back in this position. I was here 2013 to 15 um, and going to a restaurant or a pub was a good time. Um, it's good to be back in that position. You reference the, the period where you guys played in the grand final, where you were right there uh, in contention for a premiership up until right, really late in that game. What are the similarities between now and then? I guess the similarities mostly is that it sneaks up on you. You blink and you're a top three team or a top four team on the ladder. Um, if you keep doing the work and giving yourself the opportunity, all of a sudden you find yourself in a position where, um, where finals footy and playing in a grand final becomes realistic. So um, there's some similarities. And the other one probably is that the cultural nucleus of our hub uh, with our younger demographic of players, that's what's driving us forward. Caleb Sarong, Michael Frederick, um, Brandon Walker, Hayden Young, these guys that you're seeing come to life in front of you, they're what's driving the standards of our club. Uh, and that had some similarities back to when I was coming through as a younger player in 2013. Uh, it's great to talk to you. Just a quick one before we let you go. You've, you've won a couple of Brownlow medals. Andy Brayshaw's form in the middle, we're all been taken by it. His level of consistency has been, you know, at the very sharp end. Would he be, would he be uh, racking up some votes? I'd have to think so from where I'm sitting. He's compiling a fairly impressive season. Um, he, yeah, don't ask him about it because he's the most humble man you'll come across. But um, I'll be, when I get out there eventually, I'll be trying to find a few little sneaky handballs to him as much as I can. <laughs> hey, good luck. Um, fire up the... I don't think you will like fire up the open fire behind you. looks very cosy. You look pretty content. You've got through and you're back ready to play. Uh, is it your house or have you got a... Where exactly are you? I'm home. We had the fire going. We had a bit of a um, rat test <laughs> confusion beforehand, so the fire went out. We had the ambience perfect, but it's sort of. But we're here and we're on, so yeah, I'll, um, I'll get that cranking in a minute. Good on you, mate. Thanks for your time and good luck for the rest yeah. of the year. Well done. Thanks, guys.